and good afternoon to one and all this is brother Darren Hebrews 9 verse 27 and John 3 verse 16 YouTube ministry I'm just taking a, a walk up to the Houses of Parliament and Downing Street and today is the 7th of July Two thousand and twenty-two, and it's a significant day in British history because the UK Prime Minister and Conservative Party politician Boris Johnson has tendered his resignation for today, and that's quite a significant moment. It's quite a significant event because. It's been said for months now that Boris Johnson should resign and indeed many members of his own party uh, including uh, Rishi Sunak and uh, Sajid Javid uh, have resigned of recent because of I guess Boris Johnson's leadership and we can only say what is the lack of competency in that role. Now, Boris Johnson, he has headed up the party for a, for a little while and he has had significant challenges for his leadership. Brexit and the COVID-19 crisis, of course, have all been immense challenges for Boris Johnson to handle and that hasn't been easy for ourselves as a country to get through some of these these real deep challenges the issue is though that Boris Johnson in dealing with some of these concerns some of these issues some of these challenges has proven himself just to to lack integrity and just be unworthy and the funny thing is that flaw that tendency for humans or for mankind is within all of us this is not a specific aim or a dig at Boris Johnson no because the Bible says in Romans 3 verse 23 for all have fallen short of the glory of God so Boris Johnson's tenure, it has been handled with, I guess what we could only say to a degree is some scheming and manipulation in certain situations. But some of these skills, they come natural to somebody who can be a politician, who can be in a role of that type of calibre. You know, politicians, uh, essentially they learn to become some of the best debaters and speakers representative for political agendas and their parties now what has been particularly damning for Boris Johnson was the fact that during the COVID crisis during the epidemic the Conservative Party were caught having parties whilst other people in the country were on lockdown and people couldn't spend Christmas with one another and couldn't have any gatherings and people lost loved ones during that period so to kind of find out that the Conservatives have had the odd party which in a sense sorry about that yeah to find out that there were these parties which in a sense uh, Boris Johnson or other politicians within the Conservative Party weren't honest about is particularly hard for those who lost friends and loved ones during this period there have been you know other things that he's been 
I guess, un untruthful with. And that's what the general public, for one, has really kind of found to be an issue with, with Boris Johnson. So, I don't know, for some of my subscribers, you might remember an upload that I did whereby I covered the fact that in 2016 the Arch of Palmyra, the Palmyra Arch yep. was showcased in Trafalgar Square in London that Palmyra Arch was or the Arch of Triumph as they call it was an arch which led on a, a walkway down to an old pagan temple, the Temple of Bel in Syria. Now, Boris Johnson, he was, when he was London Mayor, I believe in 2016, he did a, a ceremony or an unveiling of a replica of this arch in Trafalgar Square. And this old pagan temple, the deity was called Bell, but essentially, I guess, scholars would actually link this pagan deity Bell back to the old ancient deity from the ancient Near East called Baal or Bell. And Bell. Uh, was particularly known around Phoenicia, Syria and other parts of the Middle East as a god who, or a deity, who would even accept child sacrifice. And this temple had links to that. Now Boris Johnson was made aware of the fact that whilst he was doing this un unveiling you know this uh, this whole whole ceremony for this uh, this arch of triumph that it might have links or connections to the old pagan deity Bell, but Boris Johnson denied that this arch had anything to do with that, which technically it it, it didn't by itself, but. Yet again, it was part of the overall complex or the walkway down to the temple. And I always, always felt that for the unveiling of this arch, that there would be problems with Boris Johnson and his leadership, and that countries would be affected by this. Now, this arch, this arch of triumph or the arch of Palmyra, it was also unveiled and put up in ceremonies in other parts of the globe I believe New York and um, some other some other some other parts of the globe but oh yeah and so the world government summit in 2017 uh, also had a display of this this rendering of this arch so I always thought it would be problems and even of recent times, we've just had, I believe it was the G7 group that have convened. And the G7 group, you had Boris Johnson and Justin Trudeau and I believe Macron that were sitting down at a table and they were mocking Vladimir Putin for riding sort of bareback in... Um, some of his his private videos or, or, or footage now I'll put it as plain and as simply as I can for politicians for people who are supposed to be world ambassadors and diplomats of the highest order to be laughing or, or mocking another world leader for a nuclear armed country that's deep in war is concerning for me is something that's spiritually wrong and spiritually adrift with a lot of people. But we found it 
to a degree as, as could be seen within Boris Johnson. And as, as I said, there are, there are untold uh, lies in terms of these allegations and what was brought against him for these parties. Uh, I think one was even in Downing Street during lockdown. So now, you know, his, his premiership has come to an end. And today's the 7th of the 7th. Seven is quite significant in terms of the Bible. You know, we have seven colors of the rainbow. We have God creating the earth in six days. And then we have God resting on the seventh. And today being the seventh or seven, the seventh of the seventh, the seventh of July is quite significant in that regard. So, Boris Johnson, you know, I would say fortunately his premiership has come to an end. And just some of the antics, really, and the, the, the behaviour or the traits, the lying, it's been exposed so much and now that's got to go. However, that doesn't mean that there's any respite for others it, it means that we still got to pray for the leader that comes into power into the country and as christians we're supposed to pray for those in for in authority so that we might have good and quiet lives and so that we can preach the gospel and we pray for we pray for people to repent and come to know the Lord as well. But as I said, for me, I realize that the writing should have been on the wall for Boris Johnson a long time ago. And now it is, and I'm gonna to go to 10 down the street and outside parliament and I'll upload a part two. To God be the glory, great things he has done, so lovely the world that he gave his, his son. Now Romans 3 verse 23 says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So I'm no better than Boris Johnson, neither are you. But what we can do is not look to man or look to the elites to have the answers, but continue to have our focus on God. Pray for our leaders, repent, and do that which is righteous and that which is good because we can't find our answers in man we have to look to God you know Vladimir Putin Boris Johnson Elon Musk all of these so-called elites they're flawed no matter how much money or power or authority that they've got and we certainly just can't look to them. The Bible says that we should look to God as the author and the finisher of our faith. God, not man, God. And that's what we should do. So I'm now just actually entering Parliament Square. It's a busy day. Various journalists doing interviews in terms of the news. And it's quite a scene. It's quite a scene because, lest we forget, we're still all at war, or should I say the Ukraine and Russia are. And how is it? that we can be in a country that at this time, you know, people might not have the best attitude they could or even pray towards this conflict ending. And of course, we've got conflicts and warfare all over the world and the aftermath of them, we have migrants trying to flood across into Europe daily uh, as a result of the bedlam, even that was unleashed when um, Gaddafi was taken out. 
We've got several world issues at this moment that need correct and stable leadership, good handling. So all we can do is just pray for these geopolitical situations and everything else that goes on. On the world stage. Because again, we can't trust the World Economic Forum. They're leading us towards uh, sustainable development goals and a transhumanist future. Elites again. Politicians are in line with the fourth industrial revolution. Nick Hancock spoke about that. And then Nick Hancock, Nick Hancock was found committing adultery. So there's the Houses of Parliament just over there. And I'll bring the video to a close and I'll upload a part two.